All right, right. Um, so you're not surprised we think of our workforce development effort as couched within our definition of digital manufacturing. What you heard in the video, what you heard Jacob talk about, the ability to connect different parts of the manufacturing life cycle through data and utilize that information to make smarter, more efficient business decisions. Our workforce development mission and vision is to facilitate and provide the foundations required for effective digital manufacturing and design workforce de de development, all encompassing, all inclusive efforts that leverage our network of stakeholders who you heard Jacob talk about. But this is anything from small and medium sized manufacturers to community colleges to service providers to those of you who are working in classrooms around the country. So our manufacturing reality. What is this? This is a pain point, and this is something we all know really well. 600,000 open manufacturing positions, baby boomers retiring, and nobody left to take those positions, a projected 2 million open manufacturing positions by the years 2020. Um, there are perception issues that plague manufacturing. Those of you who are in the industry know this really well. Buttering, buttressing this reality for DMDII is that we have a technology skills gap. Technology skills are getting more and more specific to the companies that require those types of workers. And so we've got this really interesting interplay between the need for manufacturing workers, CNC operators and welders, in addition to technologists with specific skills. Um, this is an interesting body of research in that we're here as the Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institute representing what is Industry 4.0, the kind of fourth revolution hitting manufacturing. These revolutions tend to be coming a little bit faster and faster. The first one lasted about 100 years. But what this means is not only do we have a need for jobs, but everything's changing again. And we need to identify what those new jobs are, service our industry members, and start working immediately with educational providers. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to train the workforce of today for these skills? The government's laid it out pretty nicely for us in terms of what they're expecting of us. DMDII exists as a cooperative agreement between our parent organization, UI Labs, and the Department of Defense, which has funded us. So a quick snapshot on some of the things that they're expecting of us in terms of our workforce development pillar. That's to establish a framework and infrastructure for workforce development, that's to attract and develop students at all levels, a vast network of stakeholders, including veterans, including minorities, including dislocated workers and incumbent workers. This is through hands-on training. We also have a need to obviously <laughs> identify and engage our relevant industry partners. Folks, as Tom Perez said, we're not going to do this by training and praying. We're going to lead from an industry demand-driven standpoint. We have to or we fail. So we're doing what we're all here today to talk about, which is to provide professional education on digital manufacturing and design. Lastly, we've got a charge to work with the National Manufacturing Extension Partnerships. We have a pilot program that we're launching with about eight MEPs around the country to do just that, which is to train the trainer, to train these uh, manufacturing professionals, which are servicing small and medium-sized companies, uh, to refer them to digital manufacturing and technology adoption. This is how we're viewing it, right? We've got a short-term and a long-term focus here. We don't need to do a bunch of random acts of excellence. We don't need to do a thousand flowers blooming. We've got a vast network of stakeholders. So what we see our charge and what we see our biggest impact in being is to serve as a foundation, to lead the digital manufacturing and design conversation and workforce development effort by providing a skills classification for digital manufacturing, establishing processes, identifying those processes, and building our network, shining a spotlight, using our factory floor for executive education, uh, funding as necessary. We are a public-private partnership. There's certainly opportunities to do that. And of course, tactical efforts every once in a while, which are exemplified by, you know, in, uh, right out of the gate back in the year 2014, before we moved into this facility, this institute got the chance to collaborate on a very exciting initiative known as the 1,000 Jobs Campaign. A lot of you who are involved with that effort are here in the room. 
real quickly, that's an effort to raise awareness for manufacturing as a viable career, uh, build capacity within the workforce development system, and place workers in manufacturing positions. That was a nice taste test for us, but where we're really going. I'm just going to talk quickly about a couple of our cornerstone programs. I could talk to you at length about a lot of the things that we're doing. We're a little short on time on that front, but we're doing something called the manufacturing digital manufacturing taxonomy. What that word means is that's a skills classification. That's our effort to leverage our industry partners working in consultation with the manpower group to identify the skills, the job pro profiles that comprise digital manufacturing design. Guess what's going on today? Everyone's talking about the same job, that new job. It's maybe even just an accentuation of what's already been going on, but we're talking about it in three different ways. So our industry partners aren't aligned. This is something companies do for themselves. We're bringing our corporate partners together and we're providing an ultimate value, not just to our industry partners though. It doesn't stop with them. This leads to competency modeling, educational curriculum enhancement, and potentially credentialing. Um, why we're here today, our educational content, our digital manufacturing and design 101. So our goal as Dean Bartles, Dr. Dean Bartles nicely laid out, is to launch a digital manufacturing and design 101 through the largest, boldest platform we were able to identify, which is the Coursera platform. Utilized by 16 million users, accessible to all, free, and leveraging our network of stakeholders and identifying new and existing learners into the head-scratching question of what is digital manufacturing and what does this mean to me? What does this mean to me as a curious student? What does this mean to me as a worker, a plant manager, or an executive? And yes, it's a part of a series. So, okay, what's a MOOC? I'm not going to assume everyone knows what a MOOC is. It's a massive open online course. That's this platform that, that is accessible to anyone with a wireless connection. You can do it on your phone. You can watch a lecture. You can participate in the quizzes and the responses. And that's what Coursera affords us. And that's what we're asking, okay, that's what we're asking you to do. Um, we're doing what is called a specialization. A specialization is a suite of courses, a collection of courses. It's a term that leads to a certi certificate. So once you complete all those courses, if you want to, if you're that interested and engaged of a learner, which we expect many to be because we know our partners want their students and their workers to figure this out, you get your shiny glossy from the partners. We did a lot of research, we did a lot of interviews, we did a lot of fact finding on this. And the evidence is there. Employers, a lot of us in the room, we know we need MOOCs, particularly for manufacturing. It's unprecedented. So you know what the manufacturers said? They said, we can really see ourselves using MOOCs, massive open online courses, to immediately train and engage our workers on these trends. Remember that slide? This is happening faster and faster, these changes. They're hitting us faster. We don't have time to go back to multi-year degree programs. Not knocking them. I'm just saying, with some of the new technologies, you need your taste test. So we're doing something slightly unprecedented, but we're doing something that meets a demand, and it positions us nicely. Um, so just to recap, we're taking this approach to provide maximal value to our members. We're targeting new and existing learners. We're providing open online and affordable, if not free, courses to inform and educate and inspire learners. And we're taking unprecedented action. Finally, we're capitalizing on this cutting edge and new model for 21st century education. How fitting that the Digital Manufacturing and Design Innovation Institute is pursuing digital models for education for our first educational content curriculum. What does this mean for all of you in the room? Just a taste test. You're obviously here to network uh, and to form your project teams. That's what this is all about. This is not exclusive. There's already been some questions during the breakfast hour about, wait, we're not a member. Are we allowed to participate? You're allowed to be here. Our project calls are open. You're allowed to apply without being a member. If you get awarded, you need to sign. You also need to be a Coursera member. Um, so this is a chance for you also to learn a little bit about Coursera. My presentation is following with a very nice overview from Coursera on who they are and what they're all about and their methodology. 
And lastly, this is your chance to make a contribution to an emerging and growing field in digital manufacturing. Make a dent. Um, I want to just recap a couple of the whys. I imagine all of you poured over the RFP in advance of this workshop or are pouring over it, but you might be scratching your head about some of the whys. Why did we say this format needs to be on demand? We said it needs to be on demand because we have a vast network of learners that we're targeting. We can't squeeze them in to half hour sessions at specific times that might not meet their schedule. These courses are going to be available and on the Coursera platform for up to three years. We want as many people accessing these as possible and meeting their schedules. That's what these MOOCs are all about, right? Content, uh, just to shed a little bit of light on the minimum of 16 weeks of content accounting um, to approximately 40 hours of work, proven model. That's why we said that. If you think you have something better in your proposal that you want to put forward, feel free to do it. We'll take it. Verified certificate, the shiny glossy. This is not course credit, this is not college credit, this is not a certification, but it is something that, that gets people to finish the specialization, to take all the series of courses, and to have something to show for it when they're done. Uh, and I've already touched on the availability. That's just something for you to know that this, these courses will be available for at least up to three years. Um, lastly, again, just to recap on some of the things that you will see in the RFP, Please don't respond without having instructional designer support. There's many avenues to pursue that. We have a question um, box on our RFP, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. You need to have subject matter expertise. That shouldn't be a surprise. This is driven from, and all of our workforce development is driven from the lens of what does this mean for digital manufacturing and design. Be prepared to be working with us if awarded. Um, and of course, be prepared to be aligned with Coursera and DMDII. So with that, I know I prefaced, we're holding questions. You might have some. We're about to jump into the Coursera section. We've got to transition over to Rebecca Tabor, who is a head of government partnerships with Coursera, a person that we've been working with for the balance of a year, getting us to this point. Uh, Rebecca is joining us from Coursera's headquarters in Silicon Valley. Uh, so we're just going to take a two-minute stretcher. Don't go too far. Have some more coffee. We're going to get her on and begin the Coursera portion shortly. Thank you. So for those of you online, thanks for your patience. Um, allow me to again introduce Rebecca Tabor, uh, who's joining us from Coursera to discuss their platform, their background, and their work with us. Great. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me?